let me bring David into the conversation because, yeah. you know, David, listen, obviously you, you can argue the data supports this aggressive Fed, but there's also a thing called common sense. And, you know, we know there's a lag effect. We know the CPI data is not perfect and it might be over overreacting on rents. We see the Mannheim uh, used car index and free fall. This is going to be a point somewhere soon where everyone's going to be shocked. What happened to inflation? And it feels like the Fed's going to be like, oh, I, you know, I, this is what I don't get. And my only my theory is, is that they, they don't really believe they're going to be able to use go as far as they want to go or say they're going to go. And that job boning is their number one tool right now. Obviously, it's working. Yeah, Charles, you're right. I mean, when you, when you look at inflation, and I've actually said this, that I, that I think inflation is close to peaking. I, I know it doesn't feel that way. I know the date of the CPI lag that you talked about, especially seeing in rents. We're seeing rents drop for the first time in 12 months. That's not showing up in the CPI data. So I want to be bullish. I, I know everything here is telling us to be bearish. There's a lot to be concerned and worried about. But our bias is bullish right now. But I would tell investors, you still want to have some dry powder. So we have 10% of our tactical portfolio short. Mm -hmm. And why? Because on down days, we're selling our shorts and we're buying longs. And I think that's gonna be a winning strategy in a market that really isn't a sideways channel, Charles.